Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested and welcome to a show and tell where I'm gonna share with you a project I've been working on lately. But before we get started, I also wanna acknowledge that, well, the world's kind of crazy right now. It's, things are messed up and we've been talking about it on our podcast this week, openly and honestly, and hopefully that's been helpful for you out there. But we also wanna acknowledge that it's a lot and we all need to take time to take care of our own mental health and oftentimes just take a moment to do something else. And for us and for many of you, the reason that you guys watch us is because you make things and we wanna celebrate making things. And we find that making things, whether it's putting together Lego or designing something can be very calming and therapeutic. And for me personally, it's a way that I can zone into my own thoughts and be introspective. So this past weekend, while things have been going on and very crazy, uh, I decided to embark on a laser cutting project that I've had on my mind for a little while now. Um, you know, while working at home, I've been doing a bunch of small model kits, you know, Bandai style kits, um, but I don't have a ton of space for it. And a lot of that work I do uh, is right at this table, right at this desk where I also podcast and record videos because I have a lighting setup for it. Um, and I do a lot of this work on, you know, on cutting mats. So this is like a very standard cutting mat. An Alvin cutting mat comes in a ton of different sizes. I personally like this size, it's eight and a half by 11 fits on this desk, not expensive at all. And I can use this for whether as a grid just for piecing together some Gundam, some Star Wars Bandai, um, doing tiny paper craft projects, or, or use it as a base to do some weathering, right? Um, but one thing that I found is that because I'm working on a small space and I need to move around and not all my projects get completed in one session, uh, I find that I'm unhappy with the sturdiness of this. Like this is rigid and um, you know I can hold things on it, uh, but it's also not the most stable platform for you know, keeping things together and setting things aside. So uh, one idea I had uh, was to make kind of a stand or a riser for this size of cutting mat. And recently we published a One Day Build where Adam made and assembled a die filer. Uh, and I really was uh, liked and was taken with the stand that he built for his die filer. It's actually an awesome build. Adam makes a couple funny mistakes in building a jig to piece together that stand. Uh, but I have access to a laser cutter. Um, and so I booted up Adobe Illustrator and then designed this guy. So this is a riser slash stand. And I was experimenting with uh, the Glowforge thick material. So it's about 0.2 inches. Um, and it's very much inspired. You can tell from Adam's stand in terms of the 45 degree angles. You know, this type of cutout here, I decided to have two bars of support, some inset pieces right here, as well as a little bit of a stability. Um, and it's two layers thick, so there's a little bit of uh, material on the inside as well that then supports, um, you know, a cut of sheet of ply like this. I just engraved Tessa logo on here uh, that can fit right on top. And so it can be just a tray for working on and storing project materials, or uh, since it's perfectly cut to fit one of these, it can also be a work surface for all sorts of projects. And you know, one of the benefits of uh, laser cutting is you can be very precise, uh, and I was very satisfied to get this uh, perfectly inset for an eight and a half by 11 cutting mat. So um, I've, I'm gonna put the designs out on Thingiverse. Uh, there'll be links in the description if you want to laser cut your own. It is scaled for 0.2 um, uh, inches. So uh, one fifth of an inch, not exactly quarter inch material, but if you have Illustrator or Inkscape, it's not too difficult to scale those tabs to get it to fit. Um, and as I've been working with this, one of the happy accidents of having this type of 
design is about 1.5 inch thick is that also perfectly allows me to inset uh, my helping hands, which I have here, and it sits right perfectly on top. So um, very easy to store other accessories around it. So that was a nice happy accident. And once I also had this riser slash tray design, I started thinking about, well, what are the different other different things that I could do with this as a riser? And so I found two other uses actually that I thought were fun that I could do with this design. Uh, the first is actually inspired by a uh, YouTuber, uh, Matt, who makes useless inventions. And he took his Glowforge and a, uh, a web app that uh, for designing puzzles and built a coffee table that was also uh, a puzzle tray. And so while I don't have no need for a coffee table, I have a tray. And so I decided to also use this as a bed for a puzzle. Um, and so it's a little platform that I've now designed a little jigsaw puzzle. And the web app allows you to scale the puzzle pieces uh, to any dimension, uh, a number of pieces. I've done a six by four here, uh, and then engrave you know, a little bit of a drawing, as you'll see in the B-roll. And while I don't need to assemble the puzzle on camera for here, it's super satisfying to then assemble it and have it assembled and have it as a little bit of a display piece. Um, and underneath this tray, if I pop out the puzzle pieces, which we'll jump cut to. I've also laser cut out this tray, which slots in to the riser. And so when I'm assembling the pieces, they don't fall through because they perfectly fit here. And then as I'm maneuvering around, I can easily also pop out pieces if I need to rearrange them and have easy access underneath as well. Uh, this was a complete arbitrary scale and design. So that's six by four. I could have done this as, you know, eight by six, uh, made these smaller, uh, made the puzzle pieces smaller for something more complicated. Um, but this was super simple to assemble. So that's a secondary use for this riser design. Now, the third use I found was also now thinking of it as not only a tray and a riser, but also as a platform. Uh, so I did a revision and laser cut out another version for which I could then put this, which is just a sheet of frosted acrylic. And so this is the second revision I have of the riser slash platform, where as you can see on the inside, I've taped in on, as a lining uh, an LED light strip. Uh, super cheap, you can find it on you know, anywhere online. Uh, and what then allows me to do is take this piece of frosted acrylic, place it right on top. Again, laser cut, so perfectly inset here, and then plug it into a power source so that I can then have it as an illuminated riser for all manner of display, you know, whether it's for figures or collectibles I have for photography projects, it essentially becomes a nice soft light box I can illuminate from underneath, add lights around it. Uh, and with this type of LED light strip, um, I can also change the illumination. And again, adds another interesting use case for this type of design. This project was super simple, allowed me to just work more in Illustrator, something that I have frankly been kind of intimidated to work in um, over the past couple of years. But now that we're in lockdown, I have some more time to work with it, do some laser cut projects and hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully it inspires you to make something. I'd love to see what you're making at home. And if you do have access to a CNC machine, uh, a laser cutter, or even um, a vinyl cutter that can cut into thin pieces of wood, I do have the SVGs for this project available in the description below that you can download and check out. But I'm gonna spend some more time taking some photos. I'm really liking using this as a lighting platform and I'm gonna take this design and maybe apply it to scale it for different sizes, smaller, bigger, and apply it as bases for all the other objects I have in my home office. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of this community and for being open-minded and engaging with us as 
we're all going through these times right now. Hope you all stay safe. Hope you're all staying kind to each other. And we'll see you next time. Bye.